Hey kids, it's the Best of Fly here and I'm uh, back here again at Blade in uh, Abingdon and today, a beautiful day, and uh, I'm going to be riding this beast, the uh, long-awaited Kawasaki Ninja H2SX, my first supercharged bike. So stick around and stay tuned, I'll give you my first impressions review of this beast. Okay, so if ever there was a uh, much anticipated bike, it was these, the original uh, Kawasaki H2, the supercharged sports bike that came out uh, all for 18 months, two years ago now. And then followed up by this one, the sort of touring version, if you like, the H2 SX, and this is the uh, SE model, so a bit of a mouthful, but uh, it's sort of a, a toned down version of the H2, if you like. More, um, well, it's sort of in the sports tourer genre, the, the old fashioned sports tourer, so it looks like a sports bike, but it's made for a bit more comfort than an out and out sports machine. Been looking forward to uh, riding one for some time. An absolutely awesome bike in terms of technology. It's got every sort of electronic aid you can think of. Sadly, this being a first impressions review, I'm only riding this bike for you know the next hour or so. I'm not going to be able to go through all those. But uh, certainly I can give you some initial thoughts on the bike. And how she feels with this supercharger. I mean, the figures behind this bike are quite monstrous. It's 197 brake horsepower. I mean, that is just, uh, that is a lot of power for a motorcycle. Let's just move that mirror in a bit. That's better. Right, let's start off then by going uh, a little way down the A34. and Just seeing how she is on faster roads already. I can see that she's an absolutely beautiful handling machine. Cornering on it is just amazing. Absolutely effortless, as you'd imagine. Here we are, look, already doing 75 miles an hour, no effort at all. Quick shifter on this works really lovely and smoothly. You barely feel the bike change power and it's kind of turbine smooth. In terms of wind protection though, at these speeds on the motorway, I am getting a little bit of wind buffet off it, I have to say. Uh, my head is in the airflow, it's clean air, so that's okay, it's not being you know, moved around all bumpy and turbulent, but I'm getting quite a bit of wind on my shoulders, uh, which is a little bit turbulent. So that, uh, that might be a little bit annoying if you're gonna do big distances on the bike, but you can tuck down, and then of course you're in a complete bubble of calm, but, uh, who wants to ride tucked down like that for any length of time. Man, this engine is super smooth. Now, as already mentioned, this has got all sorts of electronic gadgets and gizmos. You name the latest bit of bike tech, it's on here. Things like uh, lean sensitive ABS and traction control, uh, cornering lights, you name it, this bike has got it. It's also got some interesting features about the TFT dash as well. If you look here, just uh, this red bar, that you can just see, hopefully you can see it on the GoPro that's just red. That's the boost bar, boost gauge. I'll we'll change down a gear. See that the boost comes up, that's the uh, supercharger boost. And then the line on the right of it is the throttle position. So if you're giving the bike some stick, you can watch the difference between the boost and the throttle, that'd be quite fun. And then at the top right here, you've got a lean angle gauge as well. Obviously I'm straight up at the moment, so it's not showing anything, but if you're in the twisties, it keeps a measure of your lean angle as well. And this little uh, icon here on the left with the little green bar on, that's a G-meter. So it shows you your acceleration and deceleration G-forces. So all that should give you a sort of an indication that this is a serious bike when it comes to performance. And the white vans are out in force today. Just can't get away from them. From a practical viewpoint, the seating position is actually very comfortable. It's not uh, not an extreme sports bike position. I'm not feeling a lot of weight on my wrists at all. In fact, it's very light. Most of the weight I'm taking on my knees against the tank, which is really nice to grip. The clutch is very, very light. Uh, I'm five foot eight. I can get my feet down onto the balls of the feet, which is, uh, I feel I'm saying that a lot these days, but it makes it feel uh, very nice, you know, not intimidating at standstill. It doesn't feel a heavy bike particularly. Although it's quite heavy as uh, sports type bikes go. Wow, it's just round the corners, it's just amazing. 
you just it's one of those sort of set and forget it just uh, tracks around the corners beautifully quick shifter is faultless wow this thing really does go like a rocket amazing machine quite a weird uh, wind effect actually when you uh, accelerate on here it's almost like you're being sucked at the sides and it's feeling like my jacket's being pinched it's not unpleasant it's just odd I've never noticed that before it's just purely down to the aerodynamics of the front of the machine quite like it in a weird sort of way mirrors on here work really well they're nice and big they're on big stalks and uh, it means you get a great view behind I'm not looking at me at all I'm just looking at the view behind so really good situational awareness Right, just while I'm on the slower section, let's just uh, check the brakes. Rear brake. Uh, rear brake is uh, not fantastic, it has to be said. Oh, I've got a bit of distance between me and the car behind. Let's try the front brake. Oh wow, the front brake is absolutely stonking. So no problem with the brakes. The seat on here is surprisingly comfortable actually. It's quite nice and wide. It's uh, not overly padded, but it's not uh, what I'd call hard either, but uh, yeah, very comfy. It's not a bad riding position at all, actually, for a sports tourer. As I say, uh, because of this big old uh, fuel tank, you can take a lot of the weight on your knees, and I don't think your wrists would get into any trouble on this. You could ride this for, you know, several hours at a hop and not be in too much agony. Complicated looking switch gear on here. There's lots to control on this bike and lots to learn, so I'm only going to literally scratch the surface here, if that. Nice to see we've got uh, cruise control as standard and heated grips as standard as well. Not very exciting those two things, but practical on a touring type bike. Okay, let's pull over here at my usual uh, walk around spot. And talk you through the spec and show you this awesome machine. engine's got a very muted note to it actually, it's very quiet. A tight little turn here, a little test of the handling. Yeah, good turning circle. Nice, okay. Select neutral. There we have it. Right, let's jump off then. Here she is in signature Kawasaki green. And uh, these Japanese bike manufacturers really know how to do paint finishes. Look at this. This is just super lustrous. The metal flake in there is lovely. It really is beautiful. Alrighty. Okay then. In the usual way, let me get the uh, let me get the phone out, and uh, I'll talk you through the spec and show you some of the features of this bike. Here she is. Then the 2018 uh, Kawasaki Ninja H2 SX SE. Uh, it's quite a striking bike, it has to be said. I mean, the looks of it, I guess, are something that uh, probably spit, split opinions. It's growing on me as I'm looking at it, but uh, I'm not sure that it's a design that I, uh, I absolutely love. There's something about the front of it that I'm not too keen on. It looks sort of um, spaceship-ish. It's very angular. This was uh, famously designed in the wind tunnel, so I'm sure it's very efficient from a drag point of view, but uh, I'm not sure... I like the looks of it that much, although it does look striking, as I say, in this uh, in the Kawasaki green and in this sunshine. It absolutely stands out beautifully. I mean, uh, yeah, what wouldn't look nice in this light? Absolutely stonking, actually. All right, I've talked myself out of it. I do like the looks of it, after all. Okay, so to the specs, the uh, engine on this, the awesome engine, 998cc, supercharged inline four. And uh, just so you don't forget, they write supercharged on it, and it really is super smooth. And uh, a lovely, lovely power unit with bags of go puts out uh, 147 kilowatts which is uh, 197 brake horsepower at 11,000 rpm so you've really got to wind it up to get the most out of it and uh, I certainly won't be doing that on these country roads today unfortunately but uh, yeah it's all there if you need it for sure torque 137.3 newton meters at 9,500 rpm brakes on it the front it's got uh, dual discs as you'd expect it doesn't have fancy brembos these are kawasaki badged brakes but they work really really well the uh, discs on here are 320 millimeters with four pot uh, radial calipers on the back it's a 250 mil uh, single disc if we can actually get at it underneath this mahoosive uh, 
and quite ugly it has to be said uh, exhaust it's, which is a shame about the exhaust because the wheels are beautiful look at that lovely bit of machining on the wheels there and there's that single disc at the back suspension wise on the front this one has 43 mil upside down forks uh, and they're adjustable let's just uh, have a look at those there okay yep yeah, there's some forks all right and on the rear it's got what uh, Kawasaki's call Unitrack gas charge shock with piggyback reservoir and there we can see the uh, the piggyback reservoir with the adjuster okie dokie all right seat height on this 835 millimeters which is a tall sounding number but it is uh, very sculpted the seat at the front if you look how narrow it is at the front here you can get your feet down relatively easily and I say I'm only five foot eight and I'm not finding it to be a particularly tall bike by any means so even though it sounds tall it's not that bad weight wise 256 kilograms that's wet weight so fully fueled uh, so it's relatively heavy it's on a par with like a big adventure bike but uh, again doesn't feel that heavy when you're riding it or indeed when you're muscling it around I think because the, the weight is quite low tank capacity on this uh, 19 litres which is a sort of a middling sized tank I guess for a tourer uh, on some of the bigger touring bikes you're looking at uh, slightly more than that but there we go 19 litres on the electronics front well you could talk about electronics all day on this uh, on this one the SE it's got the colour TFT screen you saw launch control uh, dual direction quick shifter which works really well LED cornering lights that's these down here these are only on the SE version but uh, I'm informed they work really well uh, and then uh, cornering ABS, uh, the SE and the non-SE has cornering ABS, anti-wheelie control, traction control. Price-wise, if you want the bike, then if you want this particular model, it'll cost you uh, £18,099 for the SE. Uh, the non-SE is 15099 which is a lot of money for a motorcycle, but when you compare it to its uh, supercharged brother, the standard Ninja H2, that starts a whopping twenty-five and a half grand. So actually, considering the technology you're getting here, on this supercharged bike that's actually not a bad price uh, what else can I tell you about it uh, it comes in uh, this emerald green or it comes in or uh, well, this is gr emerald green and black or it just comes in black um, uh, that's about it I think oh the SE also has a slightly larger windscreen uh, and the seat is uh, so this is the larger windscreen on the SE which I recommend uh, is a good add and then it's got this sort of dual tone leather seat if you like on the SE which I think is an extra for the SE as well anyway there you have it then that's the uh, Kawasaki Ninja H2 SE in terms of its specs I need to jump back on again and ride her a little bit more find out a bit more about how this bike feels Wow, it's such a beautiful day today to be riding a bike. Gorgeous. All right, let's fire this up and show you this TFT screen. Lovely setup. I like the way they've done the TFT screen actually on this. And uh, great with all these extra little features. There's absolutely loads of stuff on here to go through. Loads of settings you can change, uh, which are all done via the switch gear here, which all works really nicely. Um, but frankly, there's so much, it's, it's pointless me even trying to attempt to scratch the surface on it, because it, it literally I wouldn't be doing it any sort of justice, so uh, we'll have to hold on for another day. If uh, Kawasaki UK are watching, and they want to lend me one of these for a couple of weeks so I can do a proper long-term review, I'd be more than happy to borrow one. little hint there. Man, I do like a four-cylinder engine, so smooth. Some people, you know, claim they have a lack of character. And I understand that, but uh, actually sometimes smoothness is good. It's going really slowly there because there's some monster potholes on this road. So this is a really good test for the suspension. This road is just terrible in terms of bumps. But the H2SX seems to cope with them admirably, actually. The suspension, I guess, to my mind is set on the soft side actually which is quite uh, surprising for a bike that is so sporty but it certainly soaks up these bumps on this really bumpy road a treat let's try on the uh, auto blipper yeah it works really well really smooth the uh, the quick shift on here both up and down Unfortunately, it's a 50 mile an hour limit here, so I can't go thrashing the bike on these roads. But you can just sense that this is one of those thoroughbred bikes that just wants to go. A trike with his indicator going. Hope he understood the hand signal. 
I think for me the standout feature on this bike other than the really smooth engine is just the handling is lovely on here. There's absolutely no drama on this bike, everything just works well, the brakes are great, well the front brake is great, it goes as quick as you like, it goes around the corners lovely. For me really the only negatives on this bike are the looks of it, just don't do it for me. And that hideously ugly exhaust covering up the uh, lovely wheels, well I'm sure you can get an aftermarket exhaust to fix, sort that out. And you may well like the looks, so uh, so that's just purely subjective on my part. You can sit up on the bike actually, and she's uh, you know she's comfy. You are of course then in the airflow, which today on this hot 25 degree day is actually very nice. I must just say thank you as ever to the guys up at uh, Blade Kawasaki for letting me borrow the bike for this uh, quick test. Amazing setup there, as you saw, very easy to get to. It's just off the A34 and you can actually see the back of the shop as you go down the A34 if you're coming from the north. So it's very easy to find on the industrial estate there. If you're out for a ride and you've not been before, just pop along because uh, they not only do Kawasaki's but Honda's and Ducati's too and also uh, Harley Davidson's as well. So a real mix of bikes to uh, drool over on your visit. Wow, this rape looks absolutely beautiful this time of year. I do love springtime, right. Oh, I was tempted then to open her up, but we're still in the 50 mile an hour zone. This is a no fun allowed route, I'm afraid. I'm gonna to have to change this at some point and find a road that allows me to open up these bikes. Because it just doesn't feel like this is being uh, stretched at all. But I am predominantly a road rider and I like doing tours. And this is a, you know, a bike that's aimed at road riders and for doing tours. And in that respect, its road manners are absolutely sublime. I've got this set, it's got I think four power modes. I've got this set on medium at the moment, which is just lovely for the road. There's nothing too aggressive about it. Oh, what a great day to be alive. When the weather's like this, you just can't beat Blighty. What better thing to be doing than riding a, an amazing exotic bike around beautiful British countryside on a lovely, hot, sunny day. Oh look, and as a bonus, we pick up a white van for this next leg. Excellent! I have to say, that white van almost isn't white. It really could do with a sponge over that. If you're the owner of that, you should be disgusted of yourself. You should at least have Clean Me written on it. Now here we go, I've got that weird effect going on. I'm doing 48, 49 miles an hour just sitting up, or not quite bolt upright, but in this particular position, the wind whips around the screen, sort of hits me both in the sides. It's a really strange effect. I quite like it. It's almost like the Kawasaki's giving me a big cuddle. That's got to be nice. Right, there's nothing behind me. Let me just show you this G-meter. You see the G-meter here? I'm going to brake now. Hopefully you saw that uh, show that we got up to, I don't know, probably half a half a lateral negative G. Now let's just come down the gearbox a bit while there's still nothing behind me and I'll just wind the throttle on and we'll watch this boost gauge and the throttle this time. So you're watching them, here we go, I'm in second gear. Throttle's wound on, here comes the boost. Absolutely flies. Yeah, when you get the revs up, that's where uh, that's definitely where all the power is on this machine. But sadly, I've got to behave myself, as I say, on these roads. Beautiful though they are. And there's a sign for the crematorium just to uh, remind me to be sensible. Oh, let's get a little bit of air in. I'll tell you what, for such a high power thoroughbred machine as this, it's very, very easy to ride. I mean, here I am just poodling along now. I'm in fourth gear doing 34 on a bike that's got nearly 200 brake horsepower and it is not complaining at all. Really easy to ride. You know, even if you want to just do a few lazy turns like this, it can absolutely do that and it doesn't complain at all. Well, wow, actually getting some flies in my face, what a rare summer treat. 
So in all too short a time, my uh, time on the big Kawasaki H2 SXSE is almost at an end. And uh, as I say, I've only really managed to scratch the surface and give you a sort of a little flavour et of what the bike is like on this uh, first impressions review. You really need to uh, have a go on one yourself, of course, if you're interested in buying one of these bikes uh, and just play with all the electronics and the options that are on here. There's so much that you can do with this bike. Be a nice one to have long term to really understand and learn a bit more about the bike, as I said. So that's just a little hint for Kawasaki UK if you're watching. <laughs> So what's my summary of the bike then? Well, these sports tourer bikes, there's not that many in this, in this category anymore, is there? There used to be loads in this sort of category, but there's not so much these days. I guess there's the uh, Ducati Super Sport, isn't there? But uh, that's a, a different sort of a bike in a way. Uh, I definitely prefer this over the Ducati Super Sport, no question about that. There's, uh, hello sir, not much to not like about this bike, um, other than for me the looks of it, and that's entirely a subjective thing. Uh, I mean, in the sunshine today, with that lustrous paintwork, even I was starting to warm to it, but uh, overall I don't think it's the best looking bike Kawasaki have ever come up with. Uh, and that big old exhaust is quite hideous, and it's a shame that it covers up the lovely wheels on it. But in every other respect, in practical terms, it's lovely to ride. It's very easy, non-threatening and unintimidating to ride. It's slow as you see me ride it today, or indeed, I imagine fast on a track, it would be absolutely amazing. I've unfortunately not been able to open her up much on these back roads today. But from a practical point of view, everything works, the seat's nice and comfy, the suspension's quite soft, the brakes work well, or the front brake does at least, all that's something, the back brake's not really good, but again, not a showstopper by any means. Mirrors work really well. Nice wind protection, odd wind effects at certain speeds, but again, they're not bad, it's not a bad thing, there's no dirty turbulence coming off, you could certainly put up with that. It's a comfortable riding position, I've been riding it now for about an hour, I've got no pain in my wrists or anything like that. Uh, you can support yourself on the tank, so that's lovely. Oh, national speed limit, unfortunately, loads of traffic. Beautiful engine though, the way she just winds up. And you can entertain yourself watching these boost meters and lean angle uh, gauges and uh, G-force meters all day long. So plenty to keep you amused if you're on a long, boring j ride through France or something. So uh, yeah, overall, nice bike, like it. It's uh, well worth checking out if you're in the market for a sports touring machine. An excellent value for money as well, because certainly when you compare it to its uh, brother, the uh, H2, the other supercharged Kawasaki bike. All right, I hope uh, that's been of some interest to you. If this is uh, your first time to one of my videos, thank you very much indeed for watching and stay until the end. I don't just do bike reviews here on the Missenden Flyer, but I also do things in the garage, things about how to look after your bike, how to maintain your bike. Also do trips and tours. I do monthly uh, news features as well as the odd live stream when top technology behaves. <laughs> and it would be great to have you along. So if you haven't done so already, do hit that subscribe button. That would be fantastic. All right, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.